everybody and welcome to Crazy Bee's Urban Farm. My name is Debbie if you haven't joined us before and if you're new welcome. We're so happy to have you and we're hoping that whether you're new or whether you've been here before that we give you some kind of information that helps you along your gardening journey or your cleaning journey which are the, those are the things that I do. Uh, I clean houses for a living and um, I am fully full-time employed and in the meantime when I'm home I love to garden and we have our home that we have bought uh, in 2020 and we have been trying to transform the backyard into a sustainable type of living with fruits and vegetables and being able to preserve some of our own food and we also have some chickens. Oh, we're going to put that video up for you as a matter of fact, I think today, um, to show you some of the new chickens that we got. And then we're also going to be getting some new ones in here in oh, maybe the end of this week. Um, right now we have Rhode Island Reds and we have uh, Buff Orpingtons. And they weren't getting along at all. But now they're starting to. Uh, so that's been fun to watch. And the ones that we have coming in are um, Cinnamon Queens. So they're a mix of the male and female Rhode Island Reds. So those are gonna be beautiful. So we're gonna have a, a mix of colors out there. Uh, the Buff Orpingtons are six to eight months old now, starting to lay eggs. So we're starting to get a little bit more egg production. Our Rhode Island Reds are older. Uh, so they're not laying too much, but we're just letting them live out their best lives right now, as long as they don't get too nasty with the other chickens. Um, so what we're doing it's today, not a threat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we threaten them all the time. Be nice or else. But this morning, uh, we are going through, well, not just this morning. I started this yesterday. I'm going through my seeds. I'm figuring out, I'm doing a layout of what I want to plant because as you know, last season, when I was doing all of my seedlings, I had like gajillions of seeds and starts and nowhere to put them. And I over planted and then that just, that just causes issues. So I am figuring out my spaces. So I made a graph, like here is my left garden behind my laurel and then the little middle garden. So doing my square foot gardening, this is how much space I'm going to have for that one. And then I have my middle garden here, which I have not filled out yet. Um, so I'll figure out what seeds I'm going to put in here. My problem is, is one where I have my trellises is on the back wall, which goes over right next to the neighbor's yard. So whenever I try to trellis anything right there, things are going over into his yard or I'm having to try to keep it down so it doesn't go over his fence. So I've got, when you're doing your spring planting, you got cucumbers, you got melons, you got squash, you got all of these things that are all vining, cucumelons, uh, loofah, all these things I want to do that are vining. And I'm like, I only have so many trellises. So last season with the trellis in the center garden, which is covered right now because it, it is freezing. covered right now because it's freezing. So I'm trying to save the peppers, but, um, uh, I put so many different types of vines on there that it just kind of, I didn't get my loofah, I didn't get cucumelons because it just, like the melon vines just took over everything and then it just squashed out the, the um, cucumelon and the loofah plants. So I was doing too many, too many things on one trellis system. So I got to get that figured out. I didn't know that's why we didn't get any loofah production. Yeah, both of my loofahs got sucked out by the, the other plants that I had in there. Yeah. So that's those gardens. 
And then I have um, grow bags. We're gonna be putting out six grow bags. And that's where I'm gonna be putting out the new hot peppers that we're gonna try this year. I am finding that the grow bags are better for the peppers. Uh, the plastic bags, the peppers, their roots seem to go to the top of the uh, container where I'm not seeing that with the grow bags. So I'm thinking that the with the grow bags, the roots are going deeper into the soil and going outwards instead of, you know, not going as deep. Um, so because of the air that you get through the grow bags. So that's what I'm gonna try with this and see if we get better production because we have so many peppers out there right now that we did not get good production. I mean, this little bit of peppers that we got, you know, I showed you before what we got for this, but for how many peppers we had out there in the yard last year, I should have a tub of, of dried herb, you know, peppers and peppers that we could have gave away and stuff. I mean, we did give some away. That's not all that we had, but we didn't get the production that we should have. So we are treating them as perennials. And here in the next three weeks, the frost should be done, maybe a month. I might, I might wait a month. We're gonna cut them all back. You can see new leaves coming out of the base of all of them, out of the stems. Uh, so I'm gonna cut all those back in the next month. And hopefully that bushes them out and they can they can produce something, but um, you know, you, you live and you learn and you try and you fail and you just keep going. That's just what you do. And then on this one, behind that cherry tree, I'm gonna put sunflowers. So I've got like six different types of sunflowers I'm going to put behind that cherry tree. Um, it's a nice sandy, loomy soil back there. Mm -hmm. And then the sunflowers will get above that cherry tree and they'll be able to get that sun. Um, and the birds are gonna love it. Uh, so if I can keep the rats from uh, eating my seedlings, then we'll be good. So I'm gonna have to cover them until they get a little bit older and then, then they'll be okay. Um, we set traps out the other night to get this rat that's, this big rat that's out in the garden. It keeps eating my broccoli and everything. And we watched it on video and it literally tripped the trap, jumped. We saw it jump and then went back and ate the peanut butter off the trap. Are you serious? Yes. It did it to two traps. It is so really, smart. and they are the big traps. I mean, these things smart. can take off a finger. They're smart. They are so smart. So anyway, he got a good feast off of peanut butter and, and my vegetables. So haven't figured out how to catch him yet. So we're just and, feeding the rats now. We're not eating. Yeah, pretty them. much. Pretty <laughs> much. So, I, yeah, what do you do? You just keep trying. It's like, so, hey, guys, there's peanut butter over here. I know. I know. So here's my graft I haven't started yet for my center garden. I don't know what I'm going to be able to put in here yet because um, I still have to build this up. This isn't, this garden right here is only, what, six inches with the dirt? That's not deep enough for the roots. So I'm thinking I'm gonna have to do a till um, on this until I can build it up, just so that it can loosen up that ground so that my uh, the root systems can go down further. Because uh, when I did the zucchini squash, uh, the roots were just coming out of the ground and laying on the ground um, instead of going deeper because it you know, those roots hit that caliche and they're like, no way, we can't go that way. So then, you know, let's go up. So I got to work on that. And I get ideas from, I get on the internet. This is from um, Growing in the Garden. Angela from Growing in the Garden. She's amazing. Um, she also has a Patreon thing. Uh, she's a master gardener. And I get ideas from her. Uh, you can check her out on Instagram, YouTube. She has a blog, Patreon. Uh, she has a lot of good information and she'll do monthly things. If you're in Arizona, she does. She has these videos out that show what you can plan to each month. Um, special like for Roselle Hibiscus. She has a, um, excuse me for one second.
Okay, so for like the Roselle hibiscus, she has a special uh, post just on how you take care of Roselle and the 10 best herbs to grow or the 10 best flowers to grow in Arizona. Um, you know, just all these different ideas and things. I've learned a lot from her. Anyway, she has the spring and a monsoon and a winter thing that she did um, with the diagram where if you have a small garden, so that's one four by eight bed, then she does a monsoon small garden and then a winter small garden or fall and winter and what you can plant in the companion plants. And she always adds different types of flowers to put in there. So anyway, she has this one and she did, this was the small and then she has a middle and then a, a large, um, large one. So I've been getting ideas because as people don't always believe in companion planting, some things work better being next to other things. And it's just the pollination process. So uh, basil works good next to tomatoes, not because they're companions, but because the basil will keep the bad bugs away from your tomatoes, things like that. So it's nature working together and you helping nature work together with planting things together that deter bad bugs and bring in good bugs. So that's what I'm trying to do. So with any luck, um, I'm going to start some seeds today. I really need to start the tomato and pepper seeds because they need at least 10 weeks uh, before you put them out into the garden to get a good start. I really wanna get those started. The melons and stuff, can't start those yet. It'd be too early because they need warm weather and we're not warm yet. Even though Farmer's Almanac is saying that we're gonna have a warmer spring than normal, it also said we were going to have a very wet winter and it was right, we are having a wet winter. So I'm gonna get working on all this and the next time we see you, hopefully I will have some trays to show you of stuff that I got done. Oh, girls. Rebecca, it's okay, babies. Girls, <laughs> this is not your, not only your domain. So what's going on, Mama? So right now we brought in um, four pullets. They are before Pinkton's. And when we brought them in, they came in and these, these crates over here that Candace can show you. Yeah, I posted uh, a pic about it. They were separated. Uh, two in each crate. I want to make sure that they don't come out. Um, so you can see that they came in. Two in one already crate, laid an egg. And there was one egg in here already. Um, they're between six and eight months old. And oh, they did weeks. not have any food, any water. They said they're weeks. No, months. Oh. They're months. Six to eight months old. So that's why you saw an egg because they're at the age where they can start laying eggs. Oh. Um, so they didn't have any food or water. They were shipped out Friday. So right now we're just, uh, as soon as I put them in there, we introduced them to water and now they're starting to eat their food. We put some greens in there and then of course we have our regular grain and then I put some mealworms in there. So trying to get them adjusted to their new environment. They seem to be a little mean though. Yeah, yeah. so one of the Rebecca's just tried coming in and these are Rhode Island Reds. And um, this pullet here. So are they gonna stay that green. color? Yeah. That's they gorgeous. Stay that, they stay that color. It's gorgeous. So let's hope that- Rebecca, come here. Let's hope that they let her in. Becca. Um, I think I'm gonna have to bring in a bunch at one time so that um, I'll stay here. They don't try charging one. Right, so we can't let them in. And I'm going to round these guys up. How about you put them in through that side and I'll close this side. Because I probably won't be able to catch them. Because they'll try flying away from me. 
Well, yeah, because they're not, they don't let me hold them like the new ones. No, and to try to get them into a corner stresses them out. Come on, baby. Okay. In the meantime, Rebecca. Hi. You guys are pretty girls. What? Can you come here? What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, here come the other ones. Now be nice, okay? Come on, girls. All right, well, you're not gonna come if you have your greens all over, so. No, I'm getting their food because they keep going after the food. Come on, girls. I know, and they know they're coming. Come on, you guys. Good girls. Good girls. There we go. Okay. Well, I need to get in there. <laughs> get that metal out of there. We got how many are in there? There are, you mean total? Oh, you mean the red ones. Yeah, I think three. All right, we'll be back. So I hope you all have a wonderful week and we will see you again next week and we'll see how much we got done.